Now, I would like to speak briefly about the geopolitics of China because there are many detractors who are following some of the hemispheric and international rhetoric to suggest that the People's Republic of China is a predatory lender. Let us examine the relationship between Antigua and Barbuda and the People's Republic of China. I'll say to you today, without any fear of contradiction, that there is no other government, no other country in the history of our country that would have done more for the government and people of Antigua and Barbuda than the government and the people of the People's Republic of China. When the People's Republic of China lends to our government, they extend loans up to 20 years with a five-year moratorium at 2% interest. Not even the World Bank as a developmental institution provides that type of concessional funding. Not even during a disaster because when we got or Barbuda got decimated by Hurricane Irma, the World Bank agreed to come to our rescue. And we engaged them. They offered us a loan up to 40 million US dollars over 10 years at 4%. We said to them, the term was too short, interest too high. They said to us, if you wanted better terms, we had to get a donor to give us $20 million so that they could write down their terms, probably maybe down to 1% over 20 years. So when you hear the international articulations about China being a predatory lender, I can say firmly, in the case of Antigua and Barbuda and its relationship with the People's Republic of China, that that is not so. In fact, I went as far as rebutting the Secretary of State of the United States, Michael Pompeo, to, say to, to tell him that that is not so, and call upon him and the United States to put a framework in place so that developing countries could benefit similar to what the People's Republic of China is doing. I'm pleased to announce that just yesterday, there was a release coming from the OPEC organization in the United States in which they now reckon that they will form this tripartite arrangement between OPEC, Canada and the European Union to put together a better developmental paradigm to assist developing countries in the world. So I want you all to understand too that our contribution even extends beyond the region. And when we take positions, they are never personal. They may be difficult positions, but invariably, they are designed to bring, bring better opportunities to human beings here in Antigua and Barbuda, within the Caribbean, and extra-regionally. One thing I will say to them, though, is that that new paradigm that the United States is creating must go further than extending loans. It must also have a significant grant component. And if they cannot offer grants, then they would have failed. Because the developmental policy of the People's Republic of China does not only include concessional loans, it also, include, it also includes grants. So let us examine the grants. This very project, of which we're having a hand in over ceremony, was a grant in excess of $20 million complements the government and people of the People's Republic of China. And they have made numerous grants in the past. The Saviv Richard Stadium, that was a $70 million grant from the People's Republic of China. Currently, there are two polyclinics being built. One in Villa, and one in Willikies at a cost in excess of 10 million United States dollars. Grant money again. And the best is yet to come. 
the People's Republic of China has approved a grant of $90 million to help us to provide social housing for the people of Antigua and Barbuda so we can build more resilient homes. Are those the practices of a predatory government? I say to you that those are the practices of a caring government, a government that understands the needs of developing countries globally and would have gone the extra mile to help us to build capacity literally in all aspects of our development. You name the sector and the People's Republic of China would have contributed. In agriculture, in sports, in disaster or disaster management and mitigation, in public utilities, you name the area, in sports, in health, the People's Republic of China would have contributed. And I want to take this opportunity sincerely on behalf of the government and people of Antigua and Barbuda to express our gratitude for the fact that the People's Republic of China has stood with us through thick and thin and since our independence would have made the single largest contribution to the socio-economic development of this country. In fact, I'll go further. Take away the contribution of the People's Republic of China for the last two decades in, country, in this country and tell me where this country would have been. You let me know where this country could have gone to get a concession loan to build one of the finest airport terminals in the Caribbean? Where could we have gotten a loan facility to build what will become the finest cargo port facility in the Caribbean? Talk is cheap, but what we are seeing here is proof of the pudding. And as I said to the United States and others who are critical of the People's Republic of China, Put your money where your mouth is. And I say this with no antipathy to the United States. The United States remains a close ally of the government and people of Antigua and Barbuda. We have nothing but admiration for them. But when you chide us for taking on a relationship that is in the best interest of the people, then we have an obligation to respond accordingly. And when I last checked, this hemisphere is a democratic hemisphere. So the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda should have the right to speak in any fora without fear or favor.